I've painted the next four scenes for the 100 scenes studies challenge and the first two each took me about seven hours so for the last two I challenged myself to complete each of them within an hour. Slow painting has plenty of perks. Thoughtful brush strokes, conscientious decision making, deliberate color mixing, and of course no rush. I learned so much about the way I paint and how to improve my painting skills significantly faster. Our first scene is Emperor's New Groove. I went into this piece deciding to paint from back to front, starting with the distant background of the trees and forest behind him. I blocked in the colors and tried something new, and decided to put a very watery wet layer over the dry layer of paint. As I continued the background, the shelves were particularly interesting to paint because of all of the details. There were dozens of pots, dishes, and other ceramic type surfaces that were scattered along the shelves, all bunched up pretty close together. So I had a lot of details to put in, but I wanted to make sure that I was keeping to a relatively small value range. I wanted them to kind of blend in with each other since they aren't really the focus of the scene. I don't know how successful I was with achieving it. I was very careful with my color choices and I had to repaint the background quite a few times because I just couldn't get the color right. Once the background was finished, I moved on to the booth and the table. And painting wood is a little weird. It's pretty simple, but it can be easily messed up by a wrong brush stroke. Once all that was complete, I went into painting the character. And this part was really scary, especially because by this time, the masking fluid had been sitting on the page for well over a month. In my last video, I talked about how badly it was destroying the paper underneath when I peeled it up. I was really afraid of completely demolishing the painting on the other side. So I decided to try to paint over the top, which is probably not the best option. I would have been completely fine if I just peeled it up, which you will see when I do the next painting. I think I was just a little bit too afraid of messing things up when the painting felt like it was going so well. Compared to the next painting, I felt like this one was pretty easy. It was a warmer color palette and those are usually the colors I gravitate towards. And now the next scene that I started painting was a lot cooler in tones. It was a very different experience. So that takes us into our next scene and that was Lilo and Stitch. This scene felt like it was extra difficult because it was a little bit more outside my comfort zone than the last one. And I think it shows in at least it taking me more time to paint it. Once again, I spent my time really focusing on color mixing and getting really close colors. I don't think I was very successful with the far backgrounds. I kind of threw it all together really quickly and I didn't really continue working on the piece for several more weeks. So the painting parts in the backgrounds look so drastically different than those in the foreground, specifically the characters. They look so drastically different and I think I accidentally mixed my gouaches. I think I was using my Hemi gouache for the background, and then you can very distinctly see an uptick in quality when I paint the characters, because I think I used my more expensive gouache of Winsor & Newton and Turner's gouache. And when I came to starting the characters, I realized it wouldn't have been such a big deal to peel up the masking fluid on my previous painting. I'd put the masking fluid on the page the day that I decided to do this challenge. So it had been sitting on there for a month and I fully expected it to tear up the page, but it came off relatively easily and the rest of the process was smooth sailing. Of course, this snail paste method also has downsides. I personally think that both of these paintings took way too long.
By this time, I'd already spent seven hours on this painting, and I could not stand to work on it anymore. So, I took a seat. What if I finished a painting in an hour? I think I learned just as much painting quickly as I did painting slowly. Limiting myself to just an hour to make each painting gave me an opportunity to focus. I didn't spend as much time overthinking. Coincidentally, during both sessions, I stopped right around the 30 minute mark to take a break. And that's when I started running out of steam. So my 30 minute rule is to paint and focus on painting for 30 minutes at a time and then take a 15 to 20 minute break. So these paintings that I made within an hour, no, they're not perfect. The colors are off, the line work is very rough, but I got it done. And to be honest, I don't think that they look too much different than the paintings that I've been slaving away over, spending so many more hours. And I feel like that says a lot. I also noticed that during the first 30 minutes of the painting, I would blissfully and wholeheartedly gave my full attention to painting and that was really cool. Those 30 minutes felt like two and honestly it was a really good feeling. I also noticed that after those 30 minutes, after I'd taken a break and when I came back to my work, I don't think I took long enough breaks because when I came back I was still tired and my perfectionism began to come out. And I think that that was what slowed me down. I think that's why I didn't finish both of the paintings within an hour. I got close, and they're still the fastest paintings that I've made for this challenge yet, but I was a little bit more stuck in my head when I came back. And I was thinking about all of the things that I needed to fix instead of just focusing on what I still needed to cover with paint. It felt very insightful to look back on both the very slow painting practice and the faster painting practice and comparing the two and trying to draw things that I learned from each of them to create a practice that is more sustainable for me. I definitely feel myself leaning towards a quicker practice with a lot smaller sessions. But there is also something to be said for consciously picking correct colors to mix and being able to mix them on the first attempt and even though it took more time, I think it provided better results. I don't know what a happy medium is, but I definitely want whatever it is. <laughs> the first scene that I tried to paint within an hour was the scene from Adventure Time. I decided to continue with my back to front strategy that I had been doing with the longer painting sessions with the scenes that I had done before. And for this background specifically, I just wanted to get it out of the way. I wanted to quickly get it in and then focus on the characters because I knew that the characters would be a lot more time consuming since they were multicolored. The background was all blue just with different shades. I didn't try to match the colors, I just tried to get different shades of blue that were relatively similar, but they didn't have to be that close. So I flew by doing background and immediately jumped into painting the characters. I had a lot of fun challenging myself to paint the characters quickly. I finished everything up pretty fast, I think, especially for how I have painted in the past. It does have its faults though. It does have its flaws. Not only were the colors not very accurate, but they were also patchy. They didn't have the layers that I usually add on with longer painting sessions. I only had time to do a quick pass with the colors that I mixed and then quickly fly through and do the rest. So. That is a good thing to keep in mind when I'm thinking about 
how I want to move forward with my painting process. I had a lot of fun and then the alarm went off, the timer. I managed to get all of the colors on the page and I was so proud of myself. The only thing I had left was the line art, so I just took my time and this painting amounted to an hour and a half. And then we move into our last scene. This one is from Bob's Burgers and this one also taught me a lot. I noticed while painting that the colors were very close in tone and in value. They weren't so drastically different like a, in the last scene how I went from blues to yellows. So for this scene, I decided to approach it a little bit differently and go from light to dark. And I definitely noticed myself being a lot faster. I don't think that it's as patchy either. I definitely think that the quality of my painting ended up being a lot better. Again, the colors aren't perfect, but I think all in all, everything went pretty well. And once I was getting to the end, I looked at my phone and noticed that I had two minutes to complete the line art, so I frantically tried to finish on time, and I didn't. So, I just continued on, and this painting took an hour and 15 minutes. No, I did not keep these paintings within an hour, but I think that's fine. The challenge wasn't for me to paint the entire painting within an hour. That wasn't the purpose. The purpose was for me to challenge myself to see how much I could get done within an hour and compare that to my previous paintings and prove to myself that spending a ridiculously long amount of time, an entire workday, working on a painting like they are this big. They're the size of half of my face and they were taking me anywhere from four to eight hours. Sorry, anywhere from four to seven hours. And I feel like that's unacceptable. I feel like that is a monumental waste of time when there are so many other things that I can do. I still have 88 paintings to go in this challenge and I constantly have to remind myself how many more paintings I need to do for this challenge and for me to sit here and expect them to all be perfect or to take eight hours working on each one ridiculous I don't know what I was thinking trying to take so much time for one painting I think that the way that I approached this challenge as a whole has kind of been sucking the life out of me. The challenge creator, Allison Aletha Illustrations, I have no idea how you did it. I'm ready to quit already. <laughs> it has been such a wild ride and I'm like 12% of the way through. I still have so much more to go, and I'll be honest, it is my fault. I approached it just wrong, like the way that I decided to do this is just ridiculous, and I had really high expectations for me to get done so much of the challenge when I was working full time, and all of this struggle is my own fault. I don't know what I was thinking. I have learned so much by experimenting with how long it takes me to finish one of these scene study paintings and it's also taught me a lot about how I want to proceed with this challenge. We have got to make some changes. In the beginning I decided that I wanted to just copy the scenes. I wanted to try to copy them as closely as I possibly could and I no longer think that that is the best way for me to approach these. The point of the challenge is to learn and grow as an artist and this is the first big hurdle of me deciding to do that. Moving forward, I do not want to spend more than two hours on a single painting. I think that it's okay for me to exceed that if it is a more complicated scene, if there are more details, if it is not a 2D animated scene like the last two scenes that I did, I'll give myself a break. It's fine if I spend longer. But to spend all day on a single painting that is simply for practice. It is not supposed to be a finished painting. These are studies. 
that is the thing. These are supposed to be studies. They're not supposed to be finished pieces. Instead, I should be putting those efforts into creating work that I can put in my portfolio. So in addition to having a two hour time limit, moving forward, I'm also going to have a more specific goal or a purpose for painting every single scene moving forward. Something to focus on, direct my attention, and to narrow what exactly I'm trying to learn from that scene. That is going to help me develop my skills a lot more, I think, because I will be making the decision to actively work on one specific skill. And with 88 more paintings to go, that's 88 more skills. And then the last part is stylization. I want to experiment with style a bit more. I don't want to confine myself to copying the work. If I want to put it in my own style, I want to feel free to. Or if I want to experiment with the style of the piece, I want to feel free to. I'm not going to limit myself anymore. I think that'll make the challenge a lot more fun and interesting and it will make it less boring and give me a little bit more creative freedom. So if you made it to the end of the video, I would love to hear how long it takes you to make a painting and how long you prefer to work on a painting for. You can let me know in the comments down below and if you have any questions about this challenge, you can ask away. Or if you want to learn more about the challenge, you can see the first video in the series, which I will have on screen. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, give this video a like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. Bye.